All right, folks, we welcome you to our number one of the Steve Molsberg Show. We have a lot to get to today, and we will be getting to it. Uh, Stephen Moore joins us, as mentioned, at the very beginning in just a few minutes. But um, first of all, uh, we, we have you know this this uh, controversy going on over the uh, the the, uh, the Vegas rancher Bundy, and I got to say, what what the media is doing is to be expected. It's typical and it's disgusting. And bravo to our friend Ron Christie and to uh, the uh, the deputy uh, uh, press secretary of the RNC uh, for going on CNN and telling it to uh, to uh, Costello, uh, whose name first name escapes me, like it is. Okay. Uh, what they're trying to do is paint with a broad brush because some Republicans came out in favor of Cliven Bundy in his battle with the government. Now, I haven't said anything about this case. I, I haven't weighed in on this at all. But because they came out in favor of him in his battle with the government, and then yesterday or the other day, it was revealed that, uh, that he had made racist remarks or remarks that people are calling racist about blacks and that maybe they were better off as slaves and taking subsidies from the government. To me, those are two separate issues. But here's what the media is trying to do, and they're doing it. If you were a senator or a talk show host who came out and favored Bundy's side in his battle against the government, then you must be a racist. And this must reflect on all Republicans because of what Bundy has subsequently said. This is insane. It's moronic. It's idiotic. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. How does Bundy represent Republicans? Because in a battle he's having separate of his personal views, people have supported him and they're, and they're Republicans. That means that by extension they buy into these racist comments. They don't. Just about everybody, including Rand Paul, Sean Hannity, they've supported him. They denounced those remarks. But they are separate from the issue with the government. And CNN knows this. Carol Costello knows this. They all know this. But now they think they have an opportunity to brand all Republicans as racist, like they did in 012, where they tried to brand all Republicans as rapists or favoring rape or questioning rape because of one congressman's statement. This is what they do. This is how they do it. And if a liberal makes a statement, I, I'm not familiar, but Ron Christie was saying on CNN that the governor of Illinois made uh, statements that he said were offensive to blacks and Jews. I don't, haven't heard those statements yet. And he said there's no reporting on that. None. Zero. And he is a governor, Ron Christie was saying. An elected Democratic official governor of the state, the home state of President Obama. And nothing but a farmer makes some remarks and somehow Republicans are racist. That's the game they're playing, and they're going to continue to play the game. Be smart. I know my audience is. Uh, don't buy into it, but unfortunately, the rest of America, not everybody is uh, as educated and as intelligent as my audience is, and uh, that's a shame. It really is that they're trying to get away with this. Um, okay, let's go to Stephen Moore right now, our friend. Um, you know, Stephen, it's, it's, and of course, uh, Stephen, a former editorial board member and senior economics writer for the Wall Street Journal, now chief economist at the Heritage Foundation. And Steve, always great to talk to you. You know, I was just talking about, until today, I've said nothing about this whole Bundy thing. Uh, from the beginning, I just never, you know, felt passionate about it one way or another. And because some Republicans, talk show hosts and elected officials supported him in his fight against the government, now the media is trying to brand the whole Republican Party as being racist because of the comments that Bundy made, which have nothing to do <laughs> with his battle against the government. Yeah, hey Steve, it's great to be with you. And I, I, I was watching some of the uh, TV talk shows last night, and this is all they were talking about, especially on uh, MSNBC. And you know, this is one comment by this this uh, gentleman it has nothing to do with what the whole controversy is about. What it is is an, an ad hominem attack. It's attacking him for something stupid that he said. And I, you know, I hate the racial comments that he made. Sure. But but the fact is, the government's trying to take his land from him. You know, I mean is basically interfering with his basic rights. And I think that's what it makes Americans, whether you're a liberal or conservative, you know, that, that they're trying to run people off their property, I think it's just outrageous. Uh, uh, right right now on, on CNN, will Clive Bundy's race remarks hurt the GOP? And there's Dana, Dana, Dana Bash yakking away about it. And, uh, and, and now and, and Donna Brazil is going to say, of course it will. They're all a bunch of racists. I mean, it just, it's, it, that's how they operate. That's how the left operates. Why, why, can't we have, why can't 
can't we have rational conversations about the policy issues? Why does everything from the left have to come up, down to sexism, racism, you know, rich versus poor? Uh, I'm just going to, I think the American people are getting sick of this. All right, well, I mean, let's, just, let's, let's talk about the merits of what's happening there, not some stupid comments this gentleman made. Well, I'm with you. They're two separate issues. And as again, uh, those, those comments are, are ridiculous and reprehensible, and uh, uh, any, anybody with a brain would, would agree with that. Let's move on. Uh, I want you to hear, I know you probably have, John Boehner. Um, you know, I don't know, but uh, I've watched all that. You know, there was a Forrest Gump marathon uh, not too long ago, and he kept saying stupid is as stupid does or whatever. And I'm starting to think John Boehner's got a little gump in him because, you know, it wasn't that long ago that he said that the conservatives made him shut down the government. I didn't know he shut down the government, and even if he did, why would he say such a stupid thing? And now he's got this yesterday mocking, mocking fellow Republicans who don't want immigration reform. Let's watch uh, 34. But here's, here's the attitude. <laughs> oh, don't make me do this. Oh, this is too hard. I mean, what is wrong with him? <laughs> well, I've always liked John Boehner. I think he's been a pretty decent speaker. But I think, you know, lately he has been mocking conservatives and, and uh, in a way that I think does not advance his cause, that causes, you know, friction within the uh, conservative, uh, you know, coalition within the House. And, you know, look, I actually am in favor of immigration reform. I think we need to get that done in, in, a, in a responsible way. But, you know, for him to mock his opponents and his own party, I don't think serves his cause. Do you, Steve? No. I mean, what your position no, he's going to. First of all, uh, it, it, serve, it's, it, it serves to harden the opposition. And, any, yeah, and not, exactly. only, not only Boehner, but this tactic would, would, would traditionally serve to harden uh, as the opponent, your opponent as opposed to saying, hey, come on, sit down and let's, let's, let's figure this out, which I don't want them to. But this tactic is, again, I, I, I use the word stupid because I thought – it was the stupidest thing I ever heard when he said, uh, Stephen, when he said, you know, th they made me close down the government. Republicans didn't close down the government. I mean, why would he say something yeah. like that? And now this. Yeah, he's, using, he's using the left's uh, right. terminology. Right. I mean, it, was, it was Barack Obama who wouldn't agree to reopen the government. The Republicans in the House actually passed a budget that would have kept the, the government open. I hate, I hate that, too. I hate using their terminology and their rhetoric, and especially when it's not even true. I mean, look. The Republicans passed four separate bills to send over to Harry Reid, who runs the Senate, the Democrat, and to President Obama to keep the government open and to keep open vital services, and they didn't want to do it. Yeah, all right. So we're, so you say you're in favor of immigration reform. You know, there's all kinds of talk about him, you know, they're going to make an end around, they're going to do this, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, or, or they're going to really screw uh, the Republican Party. I mean, I just don't say, I, I, I know commerce, you, the people involved in yeah. commerce, they, they say it's good. We need high skilled workers. We need low skilled workers. But to me, the layman, explain it to me because we don't have people who have jobs now. And the people who do have jobs now have taken worse jobs than they had before. So we're falling apart at the seams and you want to bring in millions of people, not you, and they want to bring in million, millions of people to take the jobs that are there. I don't get it. Well, Steve, I mean, you know, immigrants create jobs. They don't take jobs. I mean, immigration has been one of the backbone of our economy for 100 years. And, you know, we, we need hardworking people in this country. I mean, you know, there are a lot of jobs that are unfilled in this country. But No, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're just, uh, the booth. I was just yeah. saying, you know, I, I, did, but look, I think we need to bring in people who want to come to this country and work and contribute to our society. I'm in favor of I don't want people to be able to come into the country and go on welfare. That's for sure. You know, and, uh, you know, we need uh, – we need the brainiacs. We need the, the really well-trained immigrants. And, and, you know, we need to do something also, obviously, about securing our border. Uh, my only point is, you know, wherever you stand on immigration reform, it is nuts to be mo mocking right. people who oppose you. No, I, I guess. <laughs> you're not going to get a you're not going to get a compromise in that way. Now, are you ready to laugh? Are you ready to fall off your seat? I don't know if you watched the Today <laughs> Show, but you got to listen to this. They were talking okay. about a study that was done. And uh, you, you, uh, let's go cut 23. Let, let Steve here cut 23. We all know about a pay gap that exists for adult men and women in the work world. But there are surprising new numbers this morning revealing that that gap actually begins during childhood with the allowances we pay our kids. All right. So they're, they're, they go on. <laughs> they go on to do a serious story now about a study where they talk to kids. 
Okay, not they, but somebody did it. Um, uh, anyway, and, and, and boys get a higher allowance than girls. Matt Lauer goes on to admit that he, he pays oh his kids. Wait, wait, listen. He pays his kids the same allowance, but he admits the girl does more than the boy does. And then they come up with solutions for how to remedy this. I, was, I, I thought it was April Fool's. I looked at my calendar. <laughs> you know, I, I, I thought you were, you were, uh, you know, uh, you were kidding me on this, but it sounds like it's a serious study. I, you know, Steve, I can't comment on this because I only have three sons, so I, <laughs> I can't discriminate against my daughter. I don't have one. I wish I did. But, you know, I know my household, you know, I grew up with two sisters and two brothers, and, and we always felt like my sisters got all, got all the breaks. So <laughs> Unbelievable that they would take it down to that level and then try to, to, to latch it on. And, and again, repeat, they go on to repeat the myth. You know that uh, it, it extend it starts early and it. Steve, they're trying to teach it to turn them into Democrats at a very very young age. Right? I, I guess that's <laughs> it. I guess that's it. All right, let's let's talk a little bit about um, uh, about um, uh, the the trouble that we are, we're having here in with Ukraine. I mean, I know the markets uh, down uh, 145 and uh, the Nasdaq's down like 70, and yep. they say it's on, on Ukraine. The, the, the markets have kind of, and I know we're not, you're not a market analyst here, and I don't want you to act as one, but the markets have kind of ignored the, uh, the Ukrainian situation and the Russian situation uh, because of uh, earnings and whatnot. But uh, they're spooked a little bit. And, and I want to talk about the broader economy. You know, we delayed the, uh, the, the decision on the, uh, the Keystone Pipeline again last week. Uh, that would have been a message to unbelievable. You're right. That would have been a message to Russia and the world yeah, that hey, we, we could provide that. And now that's one effect on the economy that that's not going to happen. Well, uh, you know, the Keystone Pipeline is a is a real head scratcher to me because this is ten thousand jobs. These jobs pay fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Many of them are unionized jobs. Remember, I used to think that the Democrats cared about the union, uh, and uh, and I believe this was a blunder of the first order by this president. And what I've been advising the Republicans on Capitol Hill, it's time Republicans went to these blue collar industrial unions, the Teamsters, the pipe fitters, the people, the construction industry, and said. We're the ones who care about your jobs. Barack Obama, Harry Reid, they don't care about your jobs. They're trying to destroy your jobs. And this is a real opening to win back those Reagan Democrats because the, the liberals in the White House and the liberals in Congress, they are so beholden to these radical environmentalists, and, and they're trying to destroy every job in this country. Yeah, it is, it is really— I mean, I'm not, I'm not making this up. These people are crazy— they don't want. Uh, they don't like capitalism. They don't like progress. They don't want uh, us to be con continue to industrialize, and that that is putting American middle class people at risk of, of losing their jobs. I was I was out in Kentucky not long ago. A whole towns have been have been decimated by Barack Obama's anti coal policies. Yeah, there. yeah, and they towns. and they continue uh, on the uh, that anti coal crusade. He promised that he would basically shut down the coal industry in 08 when he was running, and, and he certainly uh, yeah. is doing that. Steve, always fun about, to talk Steve, to you. Think about this, by the way. Yeah. He hates coal, he hates oil, he hates gas, he hates nuclear power. I mean, what do they like? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they don't want any energy in this country. Uh, I know, and I just wish they would solidify the... By the, the way, Joe Biden, Joe Biden last week was in uh, Pennsylvania talking about how great the, uh, the the shale boom is. The very shale, I mean, talk about chutzpah. Everything they're doing is trying to slow that right, down. Right, right. I'll please joke. Well, that, well he's funny. He's He's, he's, he's to be laughed at. <laughs> hey, got to go, Steve. Love you. Thank you for coming on. Stephen Moore, ladies and gentlemen, Heritage Foundation Chief Economist. And uh, you're not going to want to miss the Molesberg panel. Oh, I promise you. Stay where you are on the Steve Molesberg Show.